Sony just dropped a brand new camera, the Sony A6700. I'm going to like give my thoughts on this camera from one who have been using the Sony A6600. This one, this camera, I've been using that for uh, more than I think two years. I don't know even how long since that camera just came out. So it's been a while since Sony chose to update their 6000 series cameras, a uh, six series of cameras that has always been very, very good for all of us because it's a, it was a cheaper body with a, the, the, the very good Sony autofocus that we know from all of its cameras. I got this, the it sits up here. It's the Sony CVE-10, which is also an APS-C sized sensor camera. And I got this is the Sony A7 IV, which is the full frame camera from uh, Sony, which is uh, one of the newest hybrid cameras from Sony. And I'm going to tell you why I think Sony A6700, which might be one of the best cameras to buy right now for its price. See, there are some things that this Sony CVE E10 is lacking, and there this, this is the this is the 10 bits uh, the 10 bit colors for the 422 colors that you get in this Sony A74, which makes you more safe to shoot in highlights and in low light and so on because you simply get more data, more co uh, co color quality when you are shooting. And in the new Sony A6700, you simply get that 422 color, you get the 10 bit color instead of just the 8-bit and it's on time that you get this quality of video inside of one of these handy smaller cameras and I think the A6700, which is the same size as the 6600, I'm sitting right here, I'm sitting looking at the camera, it's the perfect sized camera. And it has this perfect grip, which is one thing I'm lacking in this, I'm going to put it out of frame again, because in the Sony CVE-10, I'm lacking that grip. It has no grip in the camera, because when you're using a, a proper camera like this one, the Sony A7 IV, it has a proper grip, and the A6, 6600 and 6700 also have this proper grip and the great thing about this is in that grip you'll find the big battery the great big battery from sony which will last you such a long time see the one of the other new features is that the 4k on the new aps-c camera 6700 is not just 4k it's actually downscaled 6k to 4k which is some of the same technology that you'll find in this camera but there are several reasons why it might be a better choice for you to get aps-c instead of full frame like this one this is a about I think this is about 2400 or 2500 or something whereas the uh, the ZV-E10 is about 700 and I think the, seven, uh, the A6700 will be just in between in about $1,400 mark. So of course this is a much more expensive camera than the Sony CV-E10 but it also sits right in the middle of the CV-E10 and the Sony A7 IV. So if you don't really want to go for the full frame and you just want a camera that's, that, that is good enough for everything. And let me tell you why it might be better for you to choose the Sony A 6700 instead of the Sony A74. Every time I need to get a lens on for this camera, it's it's a bigger investment and I need to think about it for a longer period of time. I just recently had to purchase a a wider angle lens because I wanted to do more vlogging. And if I looked at the 16 to 35 meter 2.8 lenses, and they are so expensive. They're close to $2,000 for a lens. And some of the cheaper variants is still over $1,000 for a lens. Whereas the APS-C model lenses, uh, especially the ones from Sigma, but also the 10 to 18 millimeter, if you want to go vlogging for, for APS-C, it's it's just a whole other price range. It's 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 about one third of the price when you get lenses for the APS-C cameras instead of the the full frame cameras. So not only are you saving a bit of money on the camera body, but you are in the future you will still be saving and saving and saving money on all of your lenses. And you know what? 
no one, no one on YouTube will ever be able to tell the difference if you are using a full frame camera or if you are using a APS-C camera. The only benefit you get from using a full frame camera is that you get much better low light performance. But eh, anyway, in some of all of the newest Sony cameras, I'm sure that they have built in a lot of technique to make this experience good enough for you to like handle low light as well. But the, it, the, you also get a bit shallower depth of field from these lenses than you get on the, uh, the full frame camera. But anyway, before you are going and for, before you have a camera that's adequate for uh, vlogging with the full frame, you are sh looking at at least three to four thousand dollars. Whereas if you go with the Sony A6700, the new camera, maybe with a lens, uh, with it's about 1400 for a camera, maybe two or three hundred dollars for a lens. So you're looking at 16 or 1800 for the full setup. If you, Or if you're looking at the CVE-10, then you have about one thousand dollars for your full setup. And then you can keep adding lenses instead of paying one thousand dollars per lens you can pay half that or one third that and there are some great options right now for both similar cinema lenses and there is even some very very cool um, cinematic uh, anamorphic lenses that's especially uh, designed for the APS-C mount which would when if I was to use this camera the Sony a7 IV with for it I had to crop in and use the APS-C function which makes no sense for me because I paid so much extra for this to be a full frame camera and you know what full frame is, is not all uh, what it's made up to be i have been using black magic design for ages and their sensors are even smaller than aps-c that it's a two times crop uh, from the full frame whereas the aps-c is about one half crop from the uh, full frame sensors so my recommendation right now if you want a new camera is I think actually the Sony A6700 could be the new goat, the new go-to uh, vlogging camera for if you're doing uh, YouTube and not only vlogging if you're going around with it but also like mine here is permanently mounted to the wall because I'm using this for uh, streaming and using this for recording and using this for Zoom and everything else and I think the reason that the A6700 is better than the ZV-E10 is that the housing is just slightly bitter, bigger and the, and the handle is slightly bigger as well. Which I'm thinking that the my A6600 has never ever been close to overheating. And the ZV-E10 and the Z series has this overheating problem because they are so compact. And you know what? You you either you you want the handle, you want this, you want like just slightly slightly little bit of extra bulk and not the uh, the bulk that's in this uh, a7 IV but there's the slightly extra bulk just to be able to handle it better so it's it's like there's a new step for the if you're going to the cheapest tier my recommendation is always the ZV E10 over all other cameras the cheapest tier and if you go to the mid tier the Sony A6700 and if you go for the high tier and you just want to spend money like trash then go for the full frame I don't recommend going for full frame because you're not going to get happier from using full frame and I actually use this camera the A6600 much more than I'm using my uh, full frame camera I, I just had to buy this because I sold all my gear and I had money to uh, purchase a new camera so if I knew where I what I know today and if I if the Sony a 6600 was available I think with my knowledge and testing full frame for so long time I think today I would have bought the Sony a6700 instead of buying the o Sony a7 IV. So I'm actually I'm actually saying that if I could go back in time and if I could cash this in and get all my money back and also the lenses of course and rebuy it uh, a new system I'd, I'd either go for the there's a Lumix camera that's exciting because it has this open gate feature but that's another story but or if I want to stay to in Sony I would have uh, taken the Sony A6700 instead. Consider subscribing, that will mean so much to me. Yeah, thank you for watching.